Hello! Today we're going to be talking about lots of things to do with this wonderful mixture here, milk kefir, also called kefir, also called kefir, <laughs> K-E-F-I-R. <laughs> we try to have lots of different ferments in our diet and like you wouldn't just have one vegetable you'll have a diversity of vegetable and you wouldn't just have one fruit you'd have a diversity of fruit we try to have lots of different ferments in our diet for that reason because inside our guts is a forest and not a monoculture and in inside this jar is a beautiful diverse micro ecology and it is a room temperature ferment not uh, you don't have to heat the milk and you don't have to cool the milk to ferment it. Um, it is called a mesophilic ferment and it's not a thermophilic, so mesophilic as in room temperature. So I'm going to show you what milk kefir grains look like if you don't know. Now you can use a spoon to remove the grains. Some people like to put a strainer out and do it that way. I like to use my fingers because it just feels much more interpersonal. So do you want to see if you can get in close to that? Some people call them, say that it looks like cauliflower, I guess because of the colour. Some people say it looks like a squishy brain. So they are squishy, you can see the texture there. And if you want to have more grains or give some away, you can just do that. I just try to put a few grains in a jar. Ooh. It's all warm and squishy. So milk kefir is basically like a kombucha scoby. So it's bacteria and yeast and fungi. And instead of a pellicle that sits on top of your kombucha or your jun, this is a, a um, they're grains. So they, they float to the top like a kombucha scoby does. And I'll talk through that in a minute. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the the activated milk, the, the actual milk kefir. And with these grains, I'm going to cover them with milk. And the kind of milk you use is really up to you. So it's, I'll just quickly, before I talk about milk, it's best not to fill all the way to the top because this is a ferment, it will produce carbon dioxide and that carbon dioxide needs somewhere to go. So if you just leave a bit of room at the top of your jar, then that's where the carbon dioxide can go. So you can either put your lid on tight and put it somewhere out of the way, out of direct sunlight. You can just put the lid on um, tight or you can just leave it off slightly ajar. You could put a beeswax wrap on it. You probably could just leave it off. But if you have dust or flies or for us, um, I just don't want anything to bump it and for it to spill. So I put it on kind of semi-tight and because they'll rise to the top, because they'll rise to the top, the grains, I will every so often give it a bit of a shake or you can put a spoon in there if you don't have a lid and give that a bit of a stir. So it will, it is a ferment, so it will need burping if you do put the lid on. Um, so after a while, probably in about 24 hours after sitting on our fermenting table in our uh, in our house, in our kitchen, in our warm kitchen, because it's cool outside and we've got the fire on. Um, I'll, I'll burp it, it'll release the carbon dioxide. And then if I feel it's not 100% fermented yet, then I can put the lid on and set that aside. So I have one or two or sometimes three of these jars on the go um, all the time. And it's a really great gift to give away, give grains away to people. Um, you can eat the grains. I'm not such a fan of them. Um, you can compost them. Our chickens love them. I tend to just have heaps on the go and you are always good to give away to people who have always wanted to start fermenting. And yesterday I gave away two lots and then already, already today I've given away one lot. Um, also, you can dehydrate the grains. You can wash them under non-chlorinated water and then set them aside and and towel dry them or cloth dry them and then put them in a dehydrator or just set them aside uh, to dry and they go bright yellow when they're dehydrated and then you can it's a really good way to um, send them to family and friends or to um, 
just give them away just in case you're scared that you're going to kill all of these grains um you can just have them store dried you can also just stick this in the fridge or somewhere really cool um if you want to go away or if you're just tired of the the relentless <laughs> rhythm of having to um to use the ferment so sometimes it can be exhausting when you've got lots of things on the go that need constant attention um, including family members <laughs> so it's good to put, um, put these in the fridge if, or somewhere cool if you do want to have a break um, in terms of the milk you can use raw milk you can use pasteurized you can use filtered you can use long life milk but it does have to be dairy um, you can use goat's milk other lactating mammals I guess you could use breast milk you could use yak's milk or whatever you whatever you can get your hands um, and your taste buds onto, um, you could definitely try and experiment. And if you have used other milks, please put it in the comments because we'd love to hear um, about, always interested to hear about people's experimentations. I tend not to want to drink um, a lot of unfermented dairy, so plain milk. I like to um, ferment the dairy that I eat first. So we have lots of yogurt, lots of milk kefir and cheeses and uh, buttermilk and butter all fermented. So one of the benefits of the milk of your grains is that it puts probiotics, I probably should have started with this, it puts probiotics into the milk. So it makes it, um, uh, instead of having just like regular milk, it just makes it effervescent. So it, it is slightly alcoholic. Um, I don't, I'm very sensitive to alcohol and even when I let it sort of over ferment and it gets quite sour, I've never had an alcoholic buzz from it, but I I guess some people could or would. Um, it just puts all of the a lot. It puts lots of goodness in it. So it, it's a ferment. So it's um, full of beneficial bacteria and yeast that are really good for our um, stomach microbiome. So our guts. You can you even use long life milk, and it'll turn this shell stable white dead liquid, and it'll turn it into something living and breathing, um, which is definitely one of the benefits and if you can't uh, get your hands on some good quality milk the fact that you can just just buy regular um, store-bought milk and it'll it'll make it zing and be much more beneficial for your for your guts and also because it it's the sugars in it so it's the casein in it that um, the, the grains eat so it's eating up all the sugars making it much more digestible so just like eating there's regular cabbage or the sauerkraut and the sauerkraut is much easier for your stomach to digest in the same way that it's much easier to digest something that's fermented and it's the same with milk to, to drink it so another thing that we like to do with the milk kefir grains is to um when we get our bucket of milk so we get 10 liters of raw milk from a local uh, farm once a week and we let it, I let it sit overnight and then I scoop the cream off in the morning and I um, put the grains in that and we make cultured butter so I let it sit there for a couple of hours I take the grains out and then I put it um, in our butter churn and when I just do the cream and the and put it into the machine it takes about 20 minutes to turn into butter but if I put the grains in for a couple of hours and then take them out and then put them into the machine, um, it takes about five minutes. Um, so it's not just more beneficial for your gut because it's cultured butter and putting the good, um, this microbiome rich goodness into the butter, um, but it's also much more energy efficient. So if, if there's no power and if you put it in a jar and if you're shaking it, just remember that instead of shaking for an hour or something to separate the butter into the, from, and the buttermilk um, to make butter, then if, if you put the grains in first, and you can leave the grains in for a long time, you can re leave them in for overnight, um, and sometimes you just get a much more sour butter, which is also really nice too. Once it's separated into the butter and the buttermilk, and I strain out the um, the, the solids from the liquid and then with that leftover buttermilk I'll often put grains into that and leave that for a few hours and that turns into its own fermented um, and it's sort of like yogurty thick consistency and often we can just drink that or um, we can make pancakes with it is usually what we tend to do. So you can drink this plain um, that you can make pancakes and things like that you can put into salad dressings um, 
I haven't yet experimented with making a fruit leather with the milk of there. I have with yogurt before, so mix um, stewed apples and quince and pear and plums or whatever you've got on hand um, and some yogurt and some spices. And I've made a video before about the spiced quince fruit leather. So I have made that with yogurt before and it just dries and it makes it shelf stable and delicious. And it's a way to get some good bugs into your kids bellies if you're wanting to sneak in some some yogurt if that's something that works for your family. I would like to make it with milk kefir um, in a fruit leather. I haven't done that yet so when I do I'll let you know how it goes. So one of the things my favorite recipe at the moment and it seems to be a lot lots of people favorite recipe so um, those of you who have watched a number of our videos know that we are in a gift exchange relationship with many other families and many other households in our community. And my milk kefir drink seems to be a specialty and often requested gift. Um, so it's good to have lots on hand. So this is the drink that I make um, and share. Milk kefir with the grains removed. <laughs> I'm going to uh, grate some ginger root and this ginger comes from up uh, near Malambimbi. So thank you to those soils up there and those grow growers. And how much you put of course is up to you. Uh, I don't measure things but I imagine that I'm going to put in uh, roughly a tablespoon of grated ginger. And ginger is a warming, a warming herb, and it is also really good for your circulation. So even though it's spring here, it is still cool. So I'm just gonna pop it straight in. Okay. And I've got some uh, grated turmeric and this is from near Swan Hill and again about a tablespoon. Oh I do love turmeric. So the active ingredient uh, in turmeric is curcumin and curcumin is anti-inflammatory, has anti-inflammatory properties and so wherever you have inflammation you have aches and pains, you have arthritis, it, that's when we know we need to have more curcumin in our, in our diets and to make the curcumin bioavailable it needs one of three things. It needs to be fermented, it needs to be, uh, or it needs to be with a fat carrier. So in this case, we've got the milk, or it needs black pepper. So often when you buy curcumin um, capsules, it'll come with black pepper already in, in, the, in the capsule. I'm also gonna add some black pepper in just because I love it. So this is um, ground pepperberries from our own uh, pepperberry trees or bushes. And I'm also going to put in some cinnamon, just a small, probably a bit much, just a small little spoon amount. And if you are on a low carb diet, you could just have it like this. Um, if you're on the keto diet, kind of thing you could just have it like that um, we like to uh, add honey into ours and about a tablespoon of honey mm, thank you bees and this is honey from last year's harvest Just going to stir all of that up and you can make cheese i have made cheese before with milk kefir you just have to let it sit for even longer so you take the grains out after 28 to 48 hours depending on how much milk how many grains the temperature of your house all those variables and just going to have a taste and tell you what i think Yes. We had a friend over yesterday and 
she was saying that she has some fungus between her toes and that she's been soaking her feet, she's had it before, and she soaks her feet in milk kefir that she makes with her goat's milk um, and that always cures it. So I thought, wow, how amazing just to have that knowledge and that, that experimentation. And I'm sure that knowledge is um, quite common in some cultures, but is certainly lost from ours. So it's really great to have that. So I think, what else could we be using it for? I mean, just to put on our skin or in our hair or, I don't know, it's always good to think about other ways that we could be using it. So if you have other ways, just let us know. If you don't drink it all at once and someone doesn't steal it from you because it's so delicious, um, put the lid on and stick it in the fridge or just stick it somewhere cold so it stops fermenting. Um, and you don't need to use fresh uh, ginger and turmeric. You can use um, pre-ground, like dried ground. Um, and if I don't have anything fresh on hand, then I will just use the ground. And you can experiment. You can put, um, if you don't want to have honey, for example, I'm sure you can use sugar. I'm sure you can use stevia. I'm sure you can use coconut sugar. Um, what else have I tried before? I have tried lots of other things. I've tried putting um, cacao, didn't really work for me. I ha we have used carob before, didn't really work. Um, this seems to just hum. So this is why we make it. I just wanted to say two extra things. One was about the wildness in the milk kefir grains. And a lot of the milk kefir that you buy in a health food store or wherever you're gonna buy it, usually it's, it's not wild fermented. So usually it's like packet ferment that you might get out of a sachet and then stir into milk, which still has lots of benefits, but it doesn't have that wildness. And I would like my family and myself to have much more wild food in our diet, which is why we're big foragers um, and why, why we um, like to eat rabbits and eat roadkill um, because we want that wild tenacity. So if you don't have the capacity to go foraging, to have some milk a few grains and to have that wild culture um, in your diet, to put those wild wild good bugs in our, in our guts, that's really, um, it's really a good, I feel, a very good and really important thing for our health. And so one of the things that I love about having ferments in our house, so with, with our sourdough starter and our, um, our uh, yogurt that we just back swap and we do that for a long time. So we use a part of the previous batch to inoculate the current batch. And with the milk of your grains, these are co-evolving with us. So they're absorbing all of the, um, the goodness from the milk that is very specific in the milk that we are, are getting and drinking that is from this particular bioregion. So if you were to have the milk of your grains, they would adapt alongside you. And I feel like that relationship is not to be underestimated. We're, we're giving, we're taking, um, we're feeding one another. And on that note of feeding one another, the second point that I wanted to make, which um, I find absolutely fascinating, which is if you continuously provide the right environment for your milk of your grains, so don't just leave the grains in milk and forget about it because that's not the right environment. But if you're changing the milk regularly, milk of your grains can live forever which means they're not going to die. Yes, they will die if you put it in the fridge and forget about it. Yes, they will die if you leave the milk on your fermenting table in the milk, in the milk and forget about it because it'll just be too acidic for them to live. But if you give them the right environment, they, they're not gonna die. It's like some jellyfish that live forever. They just don't, they're not gonna decompose. They're not gonna go moldy. They're just gonna, and I, not that I want to live forever, not that anyone might want that, but to have that, that essence or that sense of the foreverness or the, the connection to different times, I think is pretty exciting. And the story of the first milk of your grains and the fact that all of the grains have come from, all of the grains that we have, they don't spontaneously create themselves. So you can't just have milk and then hope that the grains, the milk of your grains will somehow materialize in the milk. Um, it, no matter how special your milk substrate might be, but the fact that uh, they don't know where the first ones came from. Apparently the original story is that they came from Allah and that they were gifted to Muhammad. 
So that's how old they are. Whether there's truth in that, I don't know, but I just love that as a story that they're connected to the, you know, the essence of the almightiness of everything. Um, so when we drink it, that's how we feel. Okay, thanks.